Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're going to be storing some new photo cards into my binders. I have been saving up my cards for a little bit. A good chunk of it is Christmas Evil, so we'll finally get to put that away. And then the other stuff is some earlier album cards, which is super exciting. In addition to storing my photo cards, I also wanted to finally do my 1000 subscriber Q&A. I am very, very late to this, but better late than never. Uh, I did hit a thousand subscribers, I think almost like a month or two months ago, which is so weird to think about. I'm very, very late, but I still wanted to say thank you. And I did ask for questions um, that we could answer while I did my next storing photo cards. First of all, thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. I think we're currently at about 1500, which is surreal. Seeing that number continually grow is like, crazy crazy but thank you so much if you have subscribed and stuck around it really does mean a lot to me i really enjoyed um starting this channel and like starting a new hobby on top of collecting as my hobby and i just really enjoy like making content and videos and interacting with, with all of you guys so thank you so much but i did take questions on a community post a couple months ago and also in a most recent video so i picked out a couple of them and we can go through it let's get started so let's actually start with the mini binder first because we have some pobs and things to put away okay i'm gonna start off with some common questions that i get asked pretty frequently in like my comments section but one of them is where I got my photo card holders. So this is what it normally looks like when I'm not <laughs> overflowing with cards. And I like it because I can put the cards when they're sleeved in here and they're like a nice tight fit. And then I can seal them up. But I got these containers from my local dollar store. But I have seen them at like Walmart and Target before. And I feel like they'd be really easy to find like online um, if you just search like plastic or like acrylic um, container. I'll see if I can find one similar and maybe link it down below. Yeah, I just got these off of, or not, I purchased them at my dollar store. So another common question I get asked is where I buy my photo cards when I, you know, because obviously I don't pull all of my photo cards from my albums, but I buy my cards mostly off of Instagram. I find that the easiest for me personally, and it's the method I prefer because it's really easy to click through the tags. Um, and people are obviously posting new stuff for sale every hour of the day, and it's really easy to communicate and do a transactions on there. Another place is also Twitter. I did Twitter a lot when I first started photo collecting, but then I got really hooked on Instagram. So I mostly use Instagram. I have in the past used Macari Japan. It's sort of, um, Macari Japan is sort of like an eBay for Japan. Uh, the only thing is you have to use a proxy to purchase through Macari Japan. I previously have used a um, Miyokyo, but they are sadly no longer able to purchase off of Kari Japan, but there's also like Bai. Um, Bai has its pros, pros and cons, so if that's something you're interested in, I would suggest doing your own research on that. Um, but there's also eBay. eBay can be a little bit overpriced just because there's usually a lot of fees attached on the seller side, so they try and compensate that by making things a little bit higher in price. There's also um, apps, at least in the US. I don't know how global they are, but there's Poshmark, Depop, and just like Macari US. I don't have any experience with those, but I do know that those are options. But my main photo card source buying <laughs> is through Instagram. So I'm on Instagram a lot. I think it's just, it's just my preferred way. It's just so easy. And I, it's also very addicting to just sit through and like sit and scroll through the tags and just find cards that I don't need. <laughs> That's mostly what this binder is. <laughs> we'll flip back here because most of this are Christmas Evil stuff. So I already have, this is Soundwave. Um, yes. Okay, so the first ones are Chan's Sub K. 
This one was the normal pre-order benefit. This was the video call one. And I love these so, so much. I'm, I love that they're like in the same outfit. It's almost like a set of like far away and close up. I really enjoy it. <laughs> I really, really like these. Those. And I'm just realizing how not the same yellow <laughs> this paper is compared to his sweater. I didn't bring the PCs with me this time when I was looking at paper, so I'm gonna have to fix that because these colors do not match very well. <laughs> I'm sorry, ignore that. But for now, it works. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna put this before the sets. So, alright, next. These are the Lucky Draws, the Soundwave Lucky Draws. So I have Chans, Lino, Felix, and Ian. I claimed these in a go and they just barely arrived to me. Some other questions were just asking about me and that makes me a little shy. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I don't know what I could share about me. Um, I don't know if I've ever shared this like out loud on my channel, but it's in all of my accounts and my bios. Um, but hello, my name is Jessica. I don't know if I've ever properly introduced myself, but as I said, my name is in my, is on my accounts, like on Twitter and Instagram. So hello, my name is Jessica, or I, mo I more frequently go by Jess, but either works, but yes, I am Jess. Um, what can I say about myself that <laughs> won't make me too shy? Um, I'm a graphic designer. That is my job. That's what I went to school for. Um, I'm a 95 liner and feel ancient a lot of the time. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, we'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> so, okay, and now we just have some random... Not random, but they're sort of mismatched pobs. So this is Aladdin um, Sungman's infamous Teddy sub K card. I actually pulled this. I was so blessed. I pulled this card and I could not have been happier because I did not want to try and go through buying or purchasing it. This is like Red Light Sienjin all over again. Um, and then this is Sonara? Sonara-chan? I think so yeah I'm gonna put all of these on a page even though they don't match but my plan is to eventually get Chan and Sungmin's of Aladdin so that they would be on one page and then I don't know what I would do with Sungmin but I'm still missing quite a few of Chan's Christmas Evil pobs so when I get those I'll separate these on a page but for now I'm just gonna stick them here. Cute. A bit of a mismatch page, but that is okay. And lastly, I have this Sungmin Seasons Greeting card. This is from last year's from 2021's. Uh, as you can see, I have Chan's. Now I have Sungmin's. So I'm just going to add him here for now because I don't really know what else I'm going to do with him. <laughs> but cute. This is sort of like a Polaroid page. So, all right, that was all for the mini binder. We do a quick flip through of what we put in here. Cute! I'm so glad I get to like integrate this mini binder now in like my storing photo cards. That's so fun. Okay, now we can get on into the bigger bulk of album PCs. All right, let's get started. I actually have a lot of cards from the early albums, which is really exciting. I got a lot of the albums that I was missing for Christmas, and I pulled a lot of cards that I didn't have. So 
we have a couple for mixtape. I have Jongin and Han, which is very exciting. If you watched my um, storing, or no, if you watched my collection video, you would know that mixtape is like a priority to finish this year. So each card is closer and closer. <laughs> I'm just looking at my question list again. I, another question that I got asked, just that was general K-pop, is should I sleeve my photo cards? Sleeving your photo cards is a personal choice. Um, some people choose to sleeve them, some people choose not to, some people choose to double sleeve. It just sort of depends on your preference and your how comfortable you are sleeving or not sleeving your cards. If you choose to not sleeve your cards, you just have to make sure that the pocket pages that you are sleeving your cards are PVC and acid free. If they aren't and you put your card inside of them, they're very likely to get damaged because the plastic will eat away at the card. It'll affect the printing and the colors. So if you choose not to sleeve your cards, just be aware of the type of page that you put them in. If you do sleeve them, if you like if you sleeve your cards with an external sleeve it sort of doesn't matter as much if you pay attention to that kind of stuff but that's just food for thought i like to sleeve my cards because i like to know that there's an extra layer of protection against the card and the sleeves so again it's all personal preference Sle sleeving your cards does add an extent like an expense to your supplies and your collection but if that's something that's important to you, then you'll invest in it. Um, okay, now I have some stuff for I Am Not, which is super exciting. Let's see. You have four, four cards, yeah. These are the cards that I pulled from my album. I'm really, really sad about this Chani one. If you can see, he's like super, super damaged. Um, on the front and then especially like on the back too. This is how I pulled them because the cards were like layered and then shoved into the album. So I kind of don't know if I want to replace this Chani card. I'm not like a, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but I'm not like a super big fan of the baby cards. So I don't really know if I care that much to replace this, but I am kind of bummed that it came damaged <laughs> that's never never a fun time but i do have childhood chani now <laughs> the infamous blue polo it's so funny and then we have lots of selfies we have the mock nail line um let's see another question i was asked was have you always been a collector type of person or is this a new hobby um I did have a few collection of things growing up. I was really into collecting stuffed animals. Um, that was a big thing as I love, I just had like a huge basket of stuffed animals and would get them for like my birthday and for Christmas and just honestly like for any holiday that came around the corner I usually got a stuffed animal. Um, the most similar thing to collecting photo cards was I was actually really into Yu-Gi-Oh cards and just like the Yu-Gi-Oh anime in general. I was much more into that than Pokemon. I feel like Pokemon was the like mainstream card trading game that was popular but I was really into Yu-Gi-Oh and I just like I'm doing now I would sleeve them, I would put them in binders. I actually don't know where my Yu-Gi-Oh card collection is. It's, it has been lost from my childhood. I've tried to find it so many times because I think it would be so interesting to flip through and see how similar it is to what I'm doing with photo card collecting, but it's I have no idea where it is. So that's a little bit sad. But so I have collected things similarly to photo cards in the past, but this is my first time having a like super extensive and big card and collection like this so um i'm just fi trying to figure out i think i forgot about the i am not units and i don't really know what i'm doing with this i'm just gonna put this on the back of here for now because yeah i honestly don't know if i'm collecting units or not <laughs> What what do we have next? Um, I am who? 
see oh this is so exciting i'm actually like starting to put cards in for albums that i haven't had before so i am who behind i have chan and felix right i think that's what this is selfie yes the next question was how did i get into stray kids and i think this is a little bit of a funny story at least for me i think it's a funny story but i actually found them through tiktok um i was really opposed to downloading tiktok for a super super long time because before it was what it was today it was super cringy i mean it can still kind of be cringy at times but it was like musically cringy you know so i was just like really adverse to it and i was like i don't need it i didn't need another app to like waste my life on so i held out on getting it for a really really long time and then you know when the pandemic hit and we were kind of stuck at home forever i finally sort of caved in and finally downloaded it and then about a month into having it I was scrolling through on my For You page and previously nothing K-pop related had come up on my For You page nor had I like had any interactions or anything but I was scrolling on my For You page and this K-pop clip came by and it was Felix's infamous line in God's Menu and it was from the Studio Choom video <laughs> and I was immediately like whoa who is this and who are they like i immediately like ran to the comments because i was like what is going on what is this and someone had like linked the video in the comments and i went over to youtube and searched it up and watched it and instantly fell in love <laughs> i then went on a downward spiral trying to figure out who they are what they what what they were and just learning all the members so that's how i found it i i don't think if i had ever downloaded tiktok i'm not sure that i would ever have found stray kids like and it was so random that my for you page just decided to recommend that video to me i think when that's when like god's menu was like at its peak and it was just like being thrown out into the algorithm but i'm very very thankful that it did um i had actually so that it actually wasn't my first interaction with K-pop. So I realized I didn't explain very well my next like tangent of like finding stray kids and like K-pop in general. But what I was talking about was that finding stray kids on TikTok was actually my like second time discovering K-pop. I had actually known and was kind of into K-pop back when I was younger, like in high school. Um, except that I didn't really know how K-pop worked or that it really even existed outside of music videos on YouTube. That's how I primarily watched and absorbed the content. I stumbled upon them randomly one day and then was just instantly like in love with like the colors and the concepts and it was just like so different than like what Western music videos and like music in general sounded like and so it was immediately like very eye-catching and like interesting to listen to so i was really really into um like the first and second gen k-pop idols like my very first k-pop group who i was like introduced to and who i watched their music video was shiny and shiny has always had a special place in my heart um i feel like i'm a i'm a shower deep down in my heart but i watched shiny's hello music video and i was so in love that i began to just kind of like keep like clicking on the recommended videos that were on the sidebar and i became in love with like shiny super junior fx 21 big bang like all the like first and second gen idols, girls generation. It was just so much fun. I would come home from school and just watch the music videos like daily. Like it was just my routine. And like I said, I didn't really know how K-pop existed outside of YouTube at that point. I didn't really have social media. I wasn't really on the internet a lot of the time. So I didn't even know that there was a whole like community like there is today in like photo card collecting and album collecting and just like fandoms in general. I had no idea that was even a thing back then. 
all I knew was just these fun music videos that, you know, would pop up. And then, you know, Gundam Style went really viral. And then BTS kept popping up like more and more in popularity. So I kind of like was acquainted with K-pop as I got older, but I did fall off of like watching the music videos. So it wasn't really until I like got onto TikTok and found Stray Kids that I like was reignited with K-pop and was able to do a better deep dive into what it is and like the whole community and the whole world surrounding it. So it was just, it's sort of kind of interesting and like a weird full circle moment of like coming back and rediscovering K-pop and then re-listening to a lot of the artists I did initially and still being a hundred percent in love with them and loving their music and having them still be active like shiny still being active is the greatest thing in k-pop music like i am so happy that they're still active i love how i don't know i just i really like shiny <laughs> but i also just love k-pop so Anyway, I'm glad that I rediscovered it in a very backwards way. Like I said, I would watch BTS. Like I would I would keep up with BTS and like the music videos that they would come out with, but I still like it didn't click to like look up more about them outside of the music videos. And so like Stray Kids really pushed me in that direction to finally like do some more research and now here I am almost a year and a half later fully fully committed to k-pop like it's my personality trait at this point so very very funny <laughs> next on to miro i have quite a few cards for miro actually so we'll flip back here so for the album title i have hyunjin and chongbin and yeah these are all the cards that i had pulled from the miro albums So similarly, the next question was, when was the moment you decided to collect OTA and Chan? So as I said, when I was first into K-pop, I didn't even know that like photo cards and just like real physical albums existed. Um, and then when I rediscovered them, or I should say when I rediscovered K-pop and, you know, was able to do a, a thorough, more thorough deep dive, I found out that like physical albums were a thing and that photo cards were a thing and that there was photo card collectors and like a whole community attached to it and I found a lot of um collectors on YouTube who I just started watching like they're storing photo card videos like you're watching right now and album unboxings and I just sort of spiraled into that hole <laughs> and around the time is when pre-orders had dropped for in life and so I decided to order a couple of copies of the album because I was like well I really really like this new group that I found I think I want to buy their album and just see how it goes so I ordered I think six albums because I ordered two of each version of like the standards and the limited and then when the albums came to me and what is P? Pink? Oh that's purple that one's purple and then when the albums came to me and I like held my very first photo card I was like oh this is a fun time <laughs> Um, and then I kind of was like, I like all of these photo cards because I got a variety when I did my first, when I got my first albums. I did pull Hyunjin three different times, but then I got like a bunch of the other members as well. And I was like, oh, this is really fun getting like multiple members. So I was like, well, maybe I want to like collect photo cards. And I was like, maybe I want to collect all of them because although I didn't know it at the time, like Chan was my bias, but I still was like learning the like terms and the lingo. So I didn't even know that like bias was a thing. And I was like, I like all the members, so I just want to collect all their cards. And then when I kind of found out what like biases were and like 
you know, the whole the whole lingo, I had decided that like Chan is my bias, but I want to collect all the members because I just, I love all of them. I can't pick between just collecting Chan's cards. Like I just want to have a full collection. And I'm someone who gets very infatuated with things like super, super easily. And I, ha I very am like, I have to own everything. So I think that also goes into the idea of collecting OTA is I just want to own everything that they ever have. And then when I sort of like established that I wanted like a collection, then I was like, well, I think I do want like a special collection of just Chan stuff. So that's where my mini binder came in and where I like started to buy more of Chan special stuff. But yeah, basically it was just, I just couldn't pick um, a member to just solely collect. So I decided to click all of them. <laughs> I wanted to put in a quick editor's note because I had meant to talk about this during this section but I sort of completely blanked on doing so but I wanted to talk about um, me picking my bias because I unintentionally picked Chan as my bias when I watched the Studio Chum video. <laughs> so obviously Felix was the one that I noticed first and who I was initially gravitated towards because of his voice and he was like the first one that I saw as he is with most, like he has that effect, his voice has that effect, as we all know, it's a powerful thing. But when I watched the Studio Tune video, like for the first time all the way through, obviously my eyes were drawn to Felix because I had seen him through the TikTok. But as soon as I saw Chan, like the very first time I saw Chan in like that close up shot, it was game over. Uh, I didn't know what a bias was at that point, but he was my bias. I was immediately drawn to him and I was like awestruck. And then as I got to know the kids and as I got to like watch more of their content and um, get to know them more, I was constantly looking for Chan. I was like looking for him in the music videos and the talker episodes and Instagram posts, you know, and anything that I was doing to learn more about them. I was like, where's Chan? Like, where's my boy? Where's Chani? So... <laughs> Uh, it became very apparent very early on who was my bias. I just think that Chan, as I've said before, is just an amazing human being. I respect and admire him so much. I relate to him in a lot of ways. He is really handsome and talented and just all the praises. I am Chan biased, but I am also OTA bias wrecked all the time. All the boys have a special place in my heart. I feel so lucky that I found them the way they did. I'm forever grateful. I feel like I found them when I needed to and I found them, you know, that was unexpected, which kind of makes it fun as well. So yeah, I don't know. I wanted to put that in, but I had forgot to actually talk about it. So back to what else I was saying. Then we have one Chungbin go live PC. Where did this even come from? I didn't get a go live album. I don't remember. And then, oh yeah, and then there's season's greeting stuff. So, okay. Um, I don't know which black back this is though. Okay, I just had to look at a template, but it's, he goes here. <laughs> How did I get this card? I don't remember how I got this card, <laughs> but cool. All right, um, I'm gonna skip. So this is the season's greeting set. I'm gonna skip that. And then we just have all of my Christmas evil stuff. Okay, so I moved No Easy and Christmas Evil into a new binder because it just needed room. And now with Ordinary coming out, it's gonna need even more room. So let's flip to the back here where I set up Christmas Evil. So I don't have, I have completed Christmas Evil, but I don't have every single card here. Some of them are still on the way to me. Unfortunately, we can't complete this today, but it will be completed before Ordinary, which is all that I really care about. <laughs> I didn't wanna have to compete with finding the rest of Christmas Evil and working on Ordinary. I think I have, yeah, I have all of the glitters. So we can pull all of these. I also, um, I'm not gonna be putting away the larger inclusions just yet. Um, 
but the next time I store my photo cards and I have the rest of Christmas Evil, I probably will do the bigger inclusions and I'll have fillers made by then, so that'll be nice. Let's do another question. Are you a part of another fandom or stand another K-pop group? So, I feel like this is, I don't know, people get a little bit touchy when it comes to the word stan and what it means. Um, I think you can stand a group without knowing everything about them. Um, and I think that you can also not consider yourself a part of a fandom, but still really enjoy the group and support them. So for me personally, I listen to a lot of K-pop and different groups in general. Um, but for as of right now, I only consider myself um, a stay. That's really the only fandom that I would say that I'm 100% in. And that's just because... Um, while I listen to a lot of groups, and there's a lot of groups I really love, I don't know as much about them as I would like before I would want to call myself like a MOA or an ARMY or a MOMBEBE or a CARROT or what have you, you know? But everyone is different, you know? You can stand in group however you want to stand in group, and that's totally fine. So, I think... Once I finally like allow myself to deep dive into another group, that's when I'll add like another fandom to my name. But for now, I'm just to stay and that's fine. And I will support my other groups and my other loves lovingly from the side. So that is totally okay. I really like how cohesive all of the sets are this time around with this. They really finally got the cohesive memo. <laughs> like they're all blue, they're all in the blue, they're all in the red. It's very, very nice. So for this first set, I'm only missing Jungin, but again, he is on the way to me. I'm also just realizing that the backs here don't totally match up. I didn't know that before. I don't know if that bothers me or not. It kind of doesn't because at least they like align. But maybe I'll change that when I do the filler. But, huh, interesting. Now we have the red ones. I don't know why, but the red version was so much harder to find than the blue one. Like, I had such a hard time, like, trading and then even buying the last cards that I needed for the red. I don't know why. I mean, they're very, very cute, but they were just insanely difficult to, <laughs> to get my hands on. Jungjin, Felix. Someone asked me, did I go to a Stray Kids concert or other K-pop concerts before 2020? Um, I didn't, so I don't know if I said the timeline. So I discovered Stray Kids in June of 2020, so well into the pandemic. So um, I haven't ever been to a K-pop concert in person. Obviously I viewed uh, Stray Kids as ones that they've done online and like K-Contact and that, but I've never been to a k-pop concert maybe this is the year when like stray kids go on tour and stuff um but in general i've only been to one real concert well i've been to a lot of raves um but i don't know if that's considered a concert i feel like raves are more like festivals i don't know there's like a weird that's like a weird blur blurred line but I've only been to like one real official concert from like a band and then I've been to a bunch of raves and festivals so I think going to a k-pop concert like seems like a blast though and if I get the chance to I would really love to see Stray Kids on the tour that they're doing this year if possible multiple stops but I kind of also want to make sure that I am responsible with traveling because I'm sure the world is still going to be a bit crazy with COVID and all that. So we shall see. I'm, all, I'm so scared though that they're just going to drop the tour, ma 
tour announcement at like any given time so I'm just scared <laughs> um, okay then we have this was the full pre-order set again even the pre-order set is like super cohesive they were really on a cohesive run with this one I'm really really enjoying it and then the last question I think that we can end off on was was it hard to pick your channel name um, and I think probably in conjunction, I mean, they didn't ask this, but I'm sure like, it's like, how did you pick your channel name? So when I finally decided to make like my trade and sale Instagram account and Twitter, I want, I made like, like a new account separate from my personal ones that I've had for years. And I was trying to think of like a cute username to have because I had noticed that a lot of like, a lot of people in the cake pop community had really cute usernames that went along with like the groups or like their biases and stuff so i thought i figured that i wanted something to do with like stray kids and like stray so i was trying to think of words that like cute words that also started with s so in case they went with stay or stray it could like synonymously like flow from s to s and the word starlight just like kept popping into my mind of like stray starlight because for one that just sounds like super cute and it also like offhandedly reminds me of like Hal's moving castle a little bit like the specific scene where he like catches calcifer in the field you know um but also because i thought that starlight was a line in a song <laughs> of stray kids so in the song 0325 there's a start or there's a line that says this is our start line this is our start line 0325 but i misheard it about 50 times like the first 50 times that i listened to that song and thought that they were staying they were saying starlight and so i was like oh perfect you know stray starlight it's an s and an s it is um it sounds really cute it's in, it's a line in a song <laughs> it wasn't until it was, like i actually looked up the lyrics of that song one day that i realized how wrong i was but regardless i was still pretty happy with my username because i still think it's like a super cute thing and growing up i also i just loved like stars and um space in general so i was like i like it it's a cute name so that was the creation of my username and my channel name so it wasn't super hard because i kind of i kind of already had like an idea of what i had and a constant word popping up into my head it just wasn't the most correct right off of the bat so okay the last thing that we have here are palms. If you remember, I told myself that I kind of only wanted to limit myself to one OT8 palm set. And I listened to myself. We are very, very proud of me. I did just that. So I decided to buy the Music Plant palm set. This was my favorite palm set. This and Interpark, I would still low key really love to get Interpark, but those are very, very hard to find. So. I settled with Music Plant and honestly, I just, they're like, it's my favorite concept. They're my favorite type of hollows. Everyone looks so good. It's just, we have a snake bite Hyunjin. Like I could not, I had to have this set. So we bought the set. I actually found this set for like a pretty good deal too so it was just like a win-win all around but ordinary is coming up which is super exciting i've pre-ordered way too many albums <laughs> and i'm very excited about the idea of possibly going and seeing the albums in target that's gonna be a new and exciting thing so 
as of filming this no teasers have dropped yet um that running joke of like they have forgotten and comeback is happening next month is very much real but maybe this is the week that we finally get teasers and information but who knows so okay so that i think that's everything that we're gonna put away today like I said, this, this is just um, this is just season's greeting stuff, which I'm not gonna put away just yet. I do have this Felix um, ornament. I got this with my Lucky Draw stuff. I kind of don't know what to do with it, so maybe I'll hold on to that until I do the larger inclusions, and I can maybe just add it to that. But let's do a quick flip through. Even though Christmas Evil isn't finished, let's just do a quick flip through of what we have so far we're almost there like i said everything is completed it's just on the way still Yee! i'm so glad that this is finished also this is the comparison i mean i know this is just like a special album but the comparison between no easy <laughs> and christmas evil is really funny to me so let's should we end it on a the music plant page I'll turn this around so it's a little bit more aesthetic but yes so I think that's gonna be it for me today those were pretty much all the questions that I had so thank you so much if you asked a question if you have more if you're welcome to leave them in the comments down below and maybe I'll answer a few of them or maybe we can do this again a little bit later I will say it was a little bit like it was hard to do two things at once of like putting stuff in and making sure I was talking about the cards I was putting in enough and also answering the question. So I hope that was enjoyable. If not, you can tell me. And I just won't. I won't do this again. <laughs> Hopefully that you learned a little bit about me. Um, thank you again for a thousand subscribers. It's still so surreal. Thank you for just even watching my videos and you know some of you have followed me on instagram and dm'd me telling me you like my videos and that is surreal as well like having people be like oh my gosh i love your videos on like a different platform other than youtube so thank you so much you guys are always so sweet and so nice but that's gonna be it for me for now i'm gonna have a lot of ordinary videos coming in march obviously we're gonna do a binder setup if possible, I will maybe do a Target vlog, picking up the albums. We're going to do an unboxing of all the pre-order albums that I've got. And then depending on how quickly I can finish the album, we'll do a completing ordinary collection video. So lots, lots to look forward to in March. I'm very, very excited. But I hope you enjoyed. I hope that you are having a great day and that you have a great comeback month. Remember to keep in touch with all the fan bases so we can hit all our comeback goals. I'll leave a few links in the description for that. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!